Greetings, this is J.R. Dickey. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. And by the way, don't forget our website, graceandtruth.net. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, hang with me. It's about to get better. Okay, today we're going to do our part three of basic training. That's out of Matthew chapter five with the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount. Let's get started. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, the opposite of peace is war or conflict. The blessed here are not just those who enjoy peace, but rather make peace. So where is this conflict, this war? Is it between the Arabs and Israel? Is it between the right and the left? Is it between nations at all? The Bible says in Exodus 15.3, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Moses sang this after God took his people through the Red Sea and destroyed Pharaoh's army. Now, this was not the war we are looking for, but it is symbolic, for Egypt has always been a type of the world spiritually. Daniel 9.26 says, After three score and two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. This is part of Daniel's famous 70 weeks or sevens prophecy concerning the Jews and Jerusalem. It speaks of a war, and desolations, you might say, tribulations. We've discussed in other lessons how this war is the one between Israel and God. Isaiah 40 verse 2 says, Speak comfortably to Jerusalem, cry out unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, both of these verses speak of the war between Israel and the Lord. This war came as a result of Israel rejecting her Messiah, God's Son. Concerning his death, they cried, His blood be on us and on our children. That's Matthew 27, verse 25. And this is part of the war we're looking for, but there's an even greater war. It is the universal war of mankind. Romans 8, 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. This enmity results in a struggle, a conflict, which started all the way back at Eden. Galatians 5, 17 says, For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you do not do the things that you want. This is the big war. This is the war in each individual with God. And the only way for there to be peace is with our surrender. Surrender to God's grace through Jesus Christ. Each of us individually can make peace with God this way. It is, in fact, the only way to make peace with him. And when you do that, you become, as our beatitude says, a child of the Most High. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. And John, 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not been manifested as yet what we will be, but we know when he is manifested, we will be like him, because we'll see him just as he is. Now, the last two Beatitudes go hand in hand, and are linked with the final encouragement at the end. If you're going to follow Christ's teaching, 
you're going to follow him. He said in John 15, 20, Remember the word that I said to you. A slave or servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my word, they will keep yours also. That beatitude says then, Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, when you follow him, you will receive persecution. But when you do and you endure it humbly, don't then get high-minded about it, because if you'll notice, your reward is the same as those who are poor in spirit. Remember Jesus' example. Next beatitude, blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Christ fully submitted to the Lord's will all the way to and through the cross. It was in itself such a powerful testimony that Luke records in Luke 23 Verse 46 and 47. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. The two main things to note in that is that beatitude are falsely and for my sake. Don't give the enemy ammunition to speak evil of you truthfully. And remember that the blessing comes from being persecuted for his sake, not your own. Matthew 5 says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. Now, a heavenly reward is an eternal reward. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 8, 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Why were the prophets persecuted? Well, they spoke the truth via the Spirit of God. So, if you do the same, guess what? You're in good company. Great is your reward in heaven. Now, may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm and faith to trust Him. Look for our next podcast, and may you realize more of His grace today.